What is good, everybody? Julia Page here, and you can probably tell by the title that this is going to be a juicy one. Looking for your soulmate? Eh? Eh? Now, this is an interesting topic for me. It is one that, honestly, I struggled with. It's one that I was misinformed about. It's one that I went through the school of hard knocks <laughs> and really learning and coming to terms with. And it's one now that I am honored to share and that I wish somebody would have shared with me. So I've kind of collected, and these are, I didn't attach all of the scripture verses to this, but I can. <laughs> so it is backed with biblical truth here, but this is something that honestly, like I said, I wish somebody would have told me earlier. I went through a lot of really rough relationships and had to go through a lot of healing because of that as well um, and learned all sorts of things that I had no idea about whether that is soul ties whether that is uh, just a lot of what you need to do in preparation I learned a lot about that and it wasn't out of curiosity it was out of necessity so I want to share a couple of these things so soulmate just to bring some context because I know out in the world there could be many definitions of what this is and there could be many different quotes about that and many things that people will say but essentially a soulmate is somebody that really aligns with your mind they understand you emotionally intellectually and they can build you up okay so it's not just somebody that you vibe with it's not just somebody that is here for a season right in, in this context this is your life partner this is the one that you will marry and, and really have a beautiful covenant relationship with. So I want to go through, I've got three things and a bonus thing to bring context to you if you were looking for your soulmate, or maybe you thought you found them, but you didn't have this information, or maybe you are in a newly single season and you're evaluating if you even believe in that anymore. This can speak to those life transition. So number one, evaluate your present attraction. What does that mean? What are you attracted to right now? For example, I know in some of the relationships, because I wasn't spirit led, that it was my fleshly nature, right? So it's the type of person that I was attracted to, or it was this crazy rating scale, right, that we can come up with for some people, or it was how this person made you feel despite um, whether or not they were actually good for your future. Do you see what I'm saying? Like your fleshly appetite can really connect you to people that have no business being in your life. And if you are fleshly led, if you are led by your carnal nature, if you are led not by your spirit, man, you can be connected to people that don't understand your spirit. That means also that they don't understand your purpose. They don't understand your walk with God, right? So is your present attraction spirit led? Is it led by the spirit? That's a question, right? So a lot of times, for example, soul ties are developed in the flesh and they often make you smaller. I believe that they're sent by the enemy <laughs> to kill, steal and destroy anything that God is trying to do in your life, anything good in your life, your joy, your perspective, your purpose, your calling, your resources. It's a hot mess, right? Because if the enemy can get you caught up in a soul tie, you can't be busy about your purpose. So that's a huge, huge way that that can happen. If you are, well, I guess something to keep in mind too, you are attracted to everything that you're currently getting I know we don't want to accept or believe that, but you are attracted to everything that you're currently getting. So evaluate your present attraction. Sometimes we have childish attractions. Sometimes we're not spiritually mature. Sometimes we crave things like a certain title or a certain uh, finance, financial stability of some kind, whatever that measure is. Sometimes we crave to live in a certain neighborhood, to have a certain social profile, right? And those could be childish and they could really bring the wrong people into your life that mean you no good and it can waste a lot of your beautiful life force and energy and your purpose. So 
evaluate your present attraction. Number two, become what you desire or whatever you believe that God has for you, become that. Because the thing is, if you don't become what you desire, you will look for other people to give you what you desire. And that's when we get a lot of things twisted because then we're trying to control or manipulate people to treat us the way we want to be treated. And that is not how you want to be in a relationship. You don't want to connect to somebody to fill the gaps that you have. You want God to fill the gap that only God can fill in your life and to help you become what you desire so that you can attract that, right? Because remember, you are attracted to everything that you're currently getting. So whatever you're putting out is what you're currently getting. So sometimes you've got to do some level up work to recognize if you're not at the level of what you desire so that you can do your own work to be what it is that you desire to become what that is. So uh, a great example of this in the word is Esther, right? She had to go through a lot of preparation in order to shift into being a queen before that happened. Okay. So essentially another way to say this is become the queen become the king, right? That will desire, that will be what you desire so that you can attract that in another person. Okay, so for example, if you are living as an orphan, you're not gonna attract a king or a queen, okay? But if you're living as a king or a queen, you're gonna attract your counterpart. Very different levels of living, very different perspectives, mindsets, ways of showing up in the world. So that's really important. Do your personal work, heal prepare, learn about the covenant of marriage and God's design for that, understand and recognize what you've been put on the earth to do and whose you are, who you are, right? Who you belong to. What does that even mean? Develop relationship with God. Go through your own silent season and really become what it is that you desire because you can't expect anybody else to give you what you're not or anyone else to bring to you what you're not willing to give or what you can't give. That's just not a fair exchange. Like, what do you bring to the table? Okay. If you desire X, Y, or Z, make sure that you're that first. Number two. Okay. Number three. This one's big. (laughs) Be available, not desperate. Be available, not desperate. Nobody likes thirsty people. Okay. Just going to lay that there. Are you available for a king or queen? Recognize, one, that you've got to be a king or a queen, but are you available for one? Meaning, if one walked by, right, like if God did actually bring your king or queen into your life, would you recognize them? Would you be available for them to recognize you or to notice you, right? Are you shut off? Like, what? where are you? Are you in a relationship that you have no business being in while your king or queen is walking by? right? So would you recognize them? Here's the point. God does not send people into a mess. God does not bless a mess. Okay. Which is why number two is so important. Don't be desperate and be okay with that season of aloneness, that season of singleness, that season of developing relationship with God, that season of reclaiming your spiritual authority. Um, I've got a couple of great books on my website there's a few books over there that really explain this process in detail if that's of interest you can visit julianapage.com but really be okay with that season and don't rush it because god is up to something great but there's no way that you can fast track that process it's going to take the time that it needs to take right so for example a queen can wait a queen can wait a king can wait Everything else is desperate, all right? So what can you do in this silent season or in this single season or in this preparation season? Marry your purpose. Marry your purpose. That Your purpose is the foundation of a soulmate relationship. So make sure that you marry that first, okay, so that you're not looking for somebody else to bring that to you. Be busy about your purpose. That's when you find your soulmate because – Your soulmate will be in purpose also, ideally, right? (laughs) In in God's world, you're both busy about purpose so that you can recognize each other and so that you can run and build on that together, okay? And then lastly, the bonus thing, 
Trust God completely. That's why this is bonus because whew, this one is interesting. Often what we do is we say that we trust God, but then we try to make it happen. We think that our clock is ticking or that there's pressure on us or there's a sense of urgency or we need to make it happen because clearly God's not making it happen, which is all bogus, okay? God will bring the one who can recognize, who can see you, who can build with you, who is fit for your future, but you've got to be fit for your future first. And you've got to do this work and trust God completely. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. It's probably not going to look like any list that you've thought about or come up with on your own. And God knows what's best for your future. God knows what it is that you desire, what it is that you need, and who can really understand you and love you and run this race with you. But a lot of times we think we know best and we really don't. We really don't. So trust God, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So keep that in mind. But these are a couple of tips that I have for you. If you are looking for your soulmate, sometimes it's time to stop the search and just seek the source to be real so that you can really evaluate what your present attraction is. You can become what you desire. You can be available in a healthy way and not desperate. And you can trust God completely. And you need some time and you need some space to do that. So sometimes what's helpful is doing a fast. I would pray about that. But sometimes that's really helpful if you're working on hearing God, particularly about this area of your life. But those are a couple of recommendations and pointers that I wish a mentor or friend would have come alongside and shared with me to spare me some trauma and trauma and healing. Um, But I hope it blessed you. If you want more information, like I said, on those books about reclaiming your spiritual authority, co-laboring with God, or just developing a relationship with God, there's a really great devotional that guides you through a 30 day study to do that. Go check out julianapage.com. There's also some coaching services around that too. If you want some help, developing and preparing in this area of your life. So I hope this message blessed you. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, guys, stay blessed. Bye.